We know what the block diagram of an operational amplifier looks like. It takes in two input voltages, gives out an output voltage. We had labeled the input voltages as V plus, V minus, output voltage as V out, and gain as A. And we had said that this op amp is supposed to give us an equation like V out equals A times V plus minus V minus. Now we talk about if this is the block diagram, what are the other characteristics which make up how is this op amp actually made? Now the when you hear the word amplifier, you should remember the kind the amplifier configurations that you've seen being made using transistors. That is exactly what op amps are made up of. The problem with transistor based amplifiers was that there are different properties which different configurations are good at. Some configurations could give you good impedance properties, maybe input or output impedance. Some others could give you good gain, good which means a high gain. But there is no configuration which will give you all of these properties together. So the way to solve this is to is that we take these different configurations, each of which has its own benefits and its own drawbacks, and we put them all together one after the other. In the sense, we create something like the two inputs come into block one. That gives us an output. We take that output and give it to a block two. Take that output, give it to a block 3. We can design each of these 3 blocks to make sure that whatever properties we want from our operational amplifier are obtained. So what are these properties that we are looking for? Let's first look at what, what we want the input to look like. Say this input that we are talking will always have some kind of a resistance. If you have any kind of voltage source in your input, like if you are trying to feed a signal into your operational amplifier, that voltage source will always have a resistance of itself. Let's call it RS which means source resistance and let's call this particular resistance that we have here as R in which means the input resistance. That is something which will appear here. And across Rn is what we will have Vn and we can say that this voltage is Vs. Now using simple Kirchhoff's law or voltage divider what we see is that Vn is, is equal to Rn by Rn plus Rs into Vs. Now this particular resistance is a non-ideality. We don't want there to, uh, to be any voltage drop across it. We want the entire voltage to fall across Rn and hence we want Vn to be approximately equal to Vs. Now from this equation we can see that that is going to happen only like we have no control over Rs. Rs is something which is coming with the source that we are connecting. What we do have control over is Rn. And so what we try to do is to make R in much much greater than Rs. If that is true, we can ignore Rs and then Rn divided by Rn becomes 1. And thus we get the equation that we want where Vn is approximately equal to Vs. So we can this particular equation that Rn is much much greater than Rs can be written as Rn should tend to infinity. Thus we see that an ideal first stage should be something with R in tending to infinity. Infinite input voltage is the characteristic of the first stage of our operational amplifier. Look at what the second stage should look like. The second stage is something no, uh, which will give us a high gain. The second stage is something where we aim for high gain because as we said before if a particular stage is giving you a particular useful 
characteristic like a first stage gave us high input impedance naturally its gain becomes low second stage since we can control the output impedance of the first stage we can make sure that there is no voltage drop across the random resistors in between and so for the second stage we don't have to worry about the impedances as such and so we aim for getting the high gain so the basically when you have a three stage system and they have gains a1 a2 and a3 and if this is your input voltage and this is your output voltage we can we can easily write an equation as v out is equal to a1 into a2 into a3 into vn this kind of configuration is called a cascade configuration when you connect the output of one stage to the input of the other when we see this we know that from this stage we want high input impedance and so this gain is low from this stage we'll talk later there's something else that we want and so this middle stage a2 is all that can give us a high gain and that's what we design it for now talking about the third stage third stage is where we try for a low output impedance now again what we come con what we connect our operational amplifier to is not in our hands that's something that we call a load let's call this resistance the rl or load resistance so if this is the output voltage that our operational amplifier generated it will have some output resistance let's call it r out now again using basic kirchhoff's law or voltage divider we can see that the actual voltage which goes to the load is equal to rl by rl plus r out into v out now ideally we want v load to be equal to v out and as you can see from the equation that will happen only if r out goes to zero so what we want from the third stage is that the output impedance should be as small as possible or it should go to zero so these are the three stages of a differential uh, the first stage is the stage where we have r in tending to infinity second stage is when we have high gain and the third stage is where we have the output impedance tending to zero and thus you by placing three different configurations of amplifiers one after the other we can get the ideal properties of each of the different configurations and thus this entire block becomes our operational amplifier which has all ideal characteristics of an amplifier